I hope that you are still with me and slid over to part two. <clears throat> I, uh, oh man. What is it that keeps us? I mean, what is it that really keeps us with this dark European house Negro mentality? I understand, and I know some of you are upset because you, oh, I, you talking crazy. That is not me. I, I'm down for the cause. No, you're not. Your actions show. Other, and I will give you an example as I continue our talk. What makes things worse for us who have a house Negro, house slave mentality is that you are what you eat. It is already bad enough that we have been destroyed and made slaves then we are eating food that is domesticated institutionalized it is not food that we go out into the onto the land and hunt and gather this is plants and animals that we consume and that we eat that's just like we are they are controlled and dominated by our masa. You do it yourself in your garden. You put your seeds out and you some of you raise chickens and cows, whatever. You don't you 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 domesticate your food source is domesticated. And when oh man, woo! When your food source is domesticated then you limit yourself to the proper nourishment of life you limit yourself to a certain species a certain group of animals and plants when the earth contains so much out there that we have yet to discover don't know nothing about and don't even care about because we only concerned with what our masa give us. Whatever the masa put in our bowl. So the milk we drink is domesticated. The uh the chicken we eat is domesticated. Our food source is domesticated. And then you are you're giving that domesticated food. To a domesticated mind. That makes things worse for you. You don't understand that. Oh. And then. The animal flesh. For those of us. Who eat animal flesh. The, the, the domesticated animal. Is raised. Or taken to a slaughterhouse. And they are put in a line. And as they go down the line. Like they do. In a factory, a car factory. Each animal. These are living beings. They see and they hear. The murder. The killing of. Other animals. They know their turn is coming. And just like you as a human being. If somebody threatened your life. And put a gun to you. Fear goes through your, through your body. Adrenaline. And adrenaline poisons the flesh. So here we are. We are, we are domesticated. We have been raised in fear for hundreds of years. And then we eat domesticated animals and plants. And we eat the flesh of animals who die in fear. And you wonder why you're not brave. You wonder why we have stalled. We, where is your rebellious revolutionary spirit you don't have it you can talk it and that's all that's as far as you get especially
especially in 2012. Back in the day, because they lack privileges. See, the privilege that you get today, you feel is better than what we had yesterday. So you are content with your privilege. And the reason why our ancestors got a little mad was because they did not have decent privileges. Their privileges was taken away. They didn't, so they had to fight for some privilege, not for freedom, not for civil rights, but for privileges in, in their incarceration. But as soon as they were able to clear that up and get some more privileges, it's just like when they have a riot in a prison, then you give them some privileges and do a little something for the for the prisoners, then they settle back down. And that's what we do in America. So when Trayvon Martin was killed, we get a little upset, then we settle down. So-and-so get murdered, we get upset, settle down. You and I, we are institutionalized. That's what happens in domestication. Your water is poison. The air you breathe is poison. These are factors that make you and make your domestication even worse. The natural will to live for yourself has been destroyed. We have been turned into voluntary slaves. And a slave exists only to benefit its master. So everything that you do, everything that you're doing, how is it benefiting you? Overall, it might give the illusion that you're doing something for yourself. As long as you are here under the jurisdiction of the racist Caucasians of the United States of America, anything you do, no matter how good it's supposed to be, if you're not Talking about rebellion, rebellion enough to separate from your slave master, then everything that you do will benefit them. So it's a waste of time. And you should shut up and be like your ancestors who just accepted being a slave. I, I was born a slave. I will die a slave. You don't qualify. So I make my videos not necessarily for us. Because we don't qualify, not even trying to qualify, but a future person with the right mentality in a different environment might be inspired and listen to what is being said coming from this rostrum and do what is required and break these chains of being a voluntary slave. Even among the so-called Afrocentric, I'm black conscious and, and black power and all this other stuff that we have for ourselves. You fear death. You fear making the proper sacrifice. You fear the unknown. You Because you don't know really what to do. You want to be free. But you really don't know what it is. You don't know how to get there really. So you feel comfortable by talking. In the, in the past, the master worked the slaves from sunup to sundown, except Sunday, because they was good Christians. That was the, the Lord's day of rest. So six days out of the week, the slave worked from sunup to sundown, and the master allowed the slave to have a day off on Sunday. Ain't he good to us? <laughs> so on Sunday, of course, you know, many of the slaves go to church and you still do the same thing in 2012. Y'all go to the church, go to the mosque and all that on Sundays. Same behaviors as the slaves. And then, of course, you must take time to fulfill your sexual lust because when you're having sex it takes your mind away from the fact that you are a slave 
and the reality of your pitiful and pathetic life. You use, you get drunk, you use drugs, and you use religious teachings, you use religious teachings, you use religious teachings to help you escape your reality. Just like the slaves of the past. Ain't nothing changed except the people. The same thing is going on. A different form of slavery. The reality is, brothers and sisters, black man and woman of America, the reality is, we are not the children of the great. We are not the children of the most high. Ye, we are the children of of cowards, modern domesticated slaves, and institutionalized. That's why it is so hard for us to break up out of this condition. Because we are the condition. We live it. We was born into it. It's part of us. This is how we have operated for hundreds of years. And I don't care how much you believe that you are a hero is a right. I don't care how much you believe that you are an ancient Egyptian from Kemet or all this, or you some Muslim from Arabia that's, that's supposed to do this or that, whatever. The bottom line is that you are a domesticated modern slave. And you your actions continue to verify this 1,000%. <laughs> Brother, how can you call us this? How can you call us a nation, a generation of cowards? I know what a coward is. Because I was a coward. And still, at heart, I know that it is in me. Because that's where I come from. I come from up out of a cowardly people. Not a brave people. But are domesticated, cowardly people. See, we still have these attributes. A coward, a coward will pretend to like their oppressor. I'm going to say that again. A coward will pretend to like their oppressor. Just like some of y'all go to work every day and you pretend to like the boss. You really don't like the boss because many of these people that supervisors and managers, they suck. But you need your job. So, you know this person can cause you to be terminated or make things difficult for you on your job. So, you try to be cool with this person, not get on that person's bad side out of fear of unemployment. That's cowardly. And many of you do it day in and day out. A coward pretends. See, you. we even have people that we call Uncle Tom's and Sambo's. They don't really, y'all think that they, now some of them do. They are so filled with self-hatred. Some of them really do love the oppressor. They love Caucasian people because they are so sick. They believe that abuse and mistreatment is a form of love and caring. But many of these People that you call Uncle Toms and Sambos, they don't really like white folks, but they have learned how to pretend to love the oppressor due to fear. They are scared of them. But now, look at this. But cowards have no fear of their parents, relatives, and those around them. I said it again. But the coward would challenge the mother, their father, their sisters, brothers, 
and people like that that's around them. See, that's how we are. We will love the white man. We will love these Caucasians to death. They can't do no wrong. Always forgive. But we will not forgive ourselves. We will not try to love ourselves. See, that's the way of cowards. We will hate those who care for us and love us. We will hate them, but we will try to, let's work with those who have raped our grandmothers, lynched our fathers, castrated our fathers, destroyed us as a people who have made a slave out of us. Even to this day, you have a slave mentality and you want to love them. You have a we have a serious problem. We once the war that you're dealing with is the war within self. It's mental. You cannot be successful in a physical war. I don't care how many guns you get, I don't care how many laser beams you get, how many bombs you get, you will eventually be a failure because you continue to carry the mind of the oppressor. You have to get rid of of this slave mentality before you pick up any gun pick up any pea shooter you got to get rid of this otherwise even if you beat the white man otherwise no matter how you defeat it whoever is the oppressor you will lose because you are so and we are so and have been so programmed for hundreds of years we have that dark European we have that White mind in our in our heads, in our brains. So we will continue to fail. That's one of the reasons why we should not and cannot unite. Because we have that mentality. And the, and the purpose of a slave is to benefit his master. So black unification does not benefit our master. That's why we can't do it. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to tell us and send it to you again. That's why you cannot. That's why you don't want to. You cannot unite with black people. Because you don't. You do not want to do anything. to benefit, That won't benefit your massa. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Woo. Now. There's a snake. It's called a, a hog nose snake. Now, the hog nose snake, when it is under threat, the hog nose snake will pretend to be tough. It has no poison. It can't constrict. It can't do anything. The hog nose snake is harmless. Now, it'll pretend to be tough. And if that does not work, then it will pretend to be dead. Ah! Oh! The creation is so wonderful if you give your chance, if you give your mind a chance to just think about stuff, man. The black conscious community the black power movement, all this black this and all black that, they are like the hog nose snake. They pretend, and they're on the streets, and you hear them. They talk and sound tough, but they are like the hog nose snake. They are of no real threat. Because if they were a real threat, <laughs> woo, and then the hog nose snake, if the talk, if the threats don't get the job done, then they pretend to be dead. And that's what that's what you see in the black power, black conscious, Afrocentric community. You see them. They are in 
in a dead state. Except they do have certain knowledge. But they their act their actions is like the hog no snake. When something dies, there is no more there is no movement. There is no life. It's just sitting there. So with all their wisdom, with all their tough talk, all that, that you see is still dead. Like the hog nose snake. Just as dead as those they make mockery of, just as dead as those that they claim they are trying to reach. If they were a threat, if the nation of Islam was a threat, if the Hebrew Israelite nation was a threat in 2012, the Afrocentric community, if all these popular, see, I cannot include myself because it's just little old me. I don't have a gang of followers. I don't have nobody running around talking about I'm a realist. I'm part of the reality's temple. I don't have a, I don't have people donating thousands and thousands of dollars to me. So y'all don't have all of this. If the United States government thought you was a threat for real, then you would be treated like Nat Turner, who was a real rebel, who was a real revolutionary, a real liberator. And some of y'all claim that Nat Turner is your hero while you watching Nat Turner videos eating popcorn, Nat Turner was getting lynched. Nat Turner took act action and was involved in activity to try to free himself and his people the best that he knew how. You are nothing like Nat Turner. And he also came from domestication. But he understood that in order to be free, somebody got to die, somebody got to sacrifice. And y'all can't do it. You are satisfied and you are content with playing and talking on YouTube and Facebook. You happy with your little funky job that the oppressor gave you. Your pretty cars. Your love of all these delusions that some God is going to come out the sky and save you. Some, some miracle is going to give you something. Delusional. Insane. Mental defects. And you don't really, you think that for real, that you some type of black liberator, some type of black rebel, you ain't nothing but a black power. Y'all slaves still. Acting just like house Negroes. Don't even attempt to call yourself field Negroes. You don't act like field Negroes. You are content living and being like this. And your actions benefit your oppressor. Because you are a slave. I know this hurt your feelings and I'm sorry, but I have to tell us just like it is. Now I want to bring... I will talk to conclusion. The reality is. You claim that you want black liberation. You claim that you want. Us to have something that we can call our own. That's what you claim. It's not going to fall out the sky. This what you call the United States of America. Or Europe. Or, or any established nation. It was established by people who were brave, willing to die and sacrifice to get the job done. There are many white people who did not get to enjoy this nation. But they sacrificed their lives. They were brave enough to step up to the plate to cause their actions in order so this can come into existence. They had to be brave. Back then, it is the home of the brave. You couldn't be cowardly to do the things 
even though they are a wicked people, a devilish, demonic people, you still had to have bravery in order to get this job done. You couldn't be cowardly and sit back and think, oh, it's just going to give, it's just going to drop out the sky and somebody's going to hand it to us on a silver platter. That's delusional. It does not work that way. The condition will not change until you change it. Until we get some backbone and accept our reality that we are house Negroes. We have that mentality. We lazy and we have become content in our incarceration, our domestication. We don't understand what real freedom is. We refuse to accept our reality. We refuse to unite with those with the same goal of, of running away or becoming a rebel against our oppressor. The shackle of slavery is still in effect. And until you accept that reality, y'all ain't going nowhere. And you don't deserve to go nowhere. You deserve to stay in hell. You deserve to stay here. You don't deserve to bring your filthy mind your nasty mind, your lazy, trifling mind into a, a new house so you can dirty that house up. Nothing but a generation of cowards. So my message is not to those living today that have no backbone, not willing to make the ultimate sacrifices, who live in la-la land. As long as you have these fictional fairy tale belief systems in your mind then your brain cannot concentrate on giving you the answers to your problems it will give you the answer to how to build a nation it will direct you in order in order how to guide yourself to establish yourself all of it will come just like it came to them prior to you but as long as you have a slave mentality, the only thoughts that you can get and you can receive is those things that benefit your masa. And I'm not nobody's slave and you should not want to be somebody's slave too. In the scriptures, and I will leave us with this. In the scriptures, the teachings of the Bible. Now, my, my biblical uh, memory is fading away little by little, so y'all have to excuse me. But those of you who know these scriptures, you I'm pretty sure you can help me out and know exactly what I'm talking about. But God, after he freed Moses and his people, God shown them the promised land. And he said, that's yours. But there was giants on the land. There was already, already somebody living on the land. And so they were scared. They were afraid. I ain't going down in there. But here is the, here is the God that created everything. And he's telling you, that's yours. Just go get it. But they were like us, afraid. So what had to happen was that those who were in fear, those who were afraid, those, it just so happened that these were also in leadership position. They had to begin to die out. And the younger people that was coming up began to realize God said that's ours. We're going to go take it. We're going to take what's ours. And these younger people of today, little by little, they are not like us. They are misguided, but they are not like us. They have the right mentality to get the job done. They, if they had the right words to permeate their brains, could cause the correct action in order to get the job done, to cause the masses of us to qualify, 
to get some backbone in our stride so that we can accomplish what needs to be done because whether you like it or not, we are, and I do agree with you, that we are the chosen people of God, if that's what you want to call it. Because we have earned it. We have earned to we have earned the right to be the first one to walk into heaven. The first one to be to enjoy the real new world order. Because of our suffering. Because of all this madness that we have been forced to live through. And we went through those things so that we can qualify for something real big. Oh, man. Real big. And see, other people around the earth understand. But we don't. We don't understand our potential. We really don't understand who we are, even though we holler black power and all these other I'm black conscious. Do you really understand who you are? We are the ones, we are the catalyst to bring in a new way of life to this planet or we will all be destroyed. It's simple as that. So there will be no need. The white man wants to continue to rule the planet and others. They had their time. They proved unworthy. And even though we qualify, even though we have been through the pits of hell, in order for us to make that step towards that direction, we have to qualify still. One more step. Just like Martin Luther King said, I might not get there with you, but, but we're going to the mountaintop. Brothers and sisters, those of us who are living right now, it is not meant for us to go there. But we can cause and point our babies in the right direction to get the job done and throw the giants off the land and take what God gave to us. If that's how y'all want to view it. There is no, it's no, uh, that's the reason why we were put through this furnace of hell for over 400 years. We have to get rid of all these fantasies and fictional things that we have embraced. They were good at one time to cause our minds to awaken. But now you have to let everything that you knew in this world, you got to let it go. Let it all go. Start from scratch. Accept your reality. And I guarantee you, heavens, that which brought you into existence, it'll begin to talk to us. It's right here. The Bible tells us that heaven is in you. It's right here in your brain. Your brain can conceive it and these hands will build it on this earth as it was in heaven or as it was in, in heaven. But it'll be on this earth. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all religious folks. All of us religion. We came out to church. With that said, thank you for listening brothers and sisters. Family, friends, associates, and even enemies. And I know uh, the enemies of us don't like what's being said because it is fire. And it is not coming from me. It is coming from us. It's in you. The only thing I'm doing is trying to get us to go inside ourselves. And bring out that which what we have been blessed with. Sitting in our soul dormant. For hundreds of years. It's now time for us to move forward. And stop going backwards. 
grow up and get all these fairy tales and fictional stories and these things. We got to get real. Many of us will not get there. But if we do it right and awaken to who you really are, not that black stuff. That's, that's crap that the oppressor put on your plate. Stop eating off the white man's table. That which loves us, that which brought us into existence, is given us if we allow new things, new ideas. So that you can feed yourself. And then we can also be the primary example of the world to show human beings what human really is. And just like y'all teach, transform ourselves from human beings to what we call God and goddesses. Not talk about it, but be about it and move on to do great things beyond the earth and go anywhere we want to in this universe. The, uh, the, the, it's endless. What we can do is endless. Oh, man, it's just, woo. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. Jot down your comments. This was it is. The Reality's Temple on Earth. Respect you.